1985, I was a college student and an activist in something called the divestment movement. Uh, in the UC system, there were a lot of arrests and protests, and he came to speak to us uh, in that year. And for me, it was really the inspiration to dedicate myself to the study of Africa, because here there was this amazing spiritual force who could make political arguments that were moral and were good. And uh, I don't know if I've ever arrived at uh, his um, his abilities, but I know he was always the star that I guided myself towards. Uh, I had a chance to, you know, be uh, close to him for that moment in time and the rest of my life. I watched him as he went from triumph to triumph, defeating apartheid, uh, creating an, an ideal of a rainbow nation and getting beyond retribution. And he remains so committed to that. He was, he was always just one of those lights like Nelson Mandela, like the Dalai Lama, never a corruption scandal, never a sex scandal, never took the money, always lending himself to fight for the little guy. So yeah, he'll he'll especially be remembered for for his tireless work to put an end to apartheid. Uh, what 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 role exactly uh, did he play in this in this part of, of history? Well, in the apartheid struggle, he of course uh, called for freeing Nelson Mandela, which afterwards might sound so obvious, but in those days it sounded like an unrealizable dream. He also uh, dealt, Nelson Mandela's wife, Winnie Mandela, had sort of become the spokesperson of the movement, and they were burning tires around uh, people who were considered to be informants on this movement, it was a police state, and he actually threw himself on a body of an informant, uh, saying, you've got to forgive this man. That And, and in a way, his, in, his usefulness was he was able to cross the black-white divide through religion. I, I later met and interviewed Derek Keyes, the first white finance minister of Nelson Mandela, and Derek Keyes told me, you know, the one thing that we all had together, that is the blacks and the whites who brought an end to apartheid, was our common faith. And his statute as, uh, as the arch, as the archbishop, uh, helped him always to take unpopular positions, even against his own church. So, so beyond the fight for racial, racial equality, he also defended causes that, that weren't as popular in South Africa and, and even furthermore like, harshly criticized the ruling ANC party. Is this part of the reason he was referred to as the moral compass uh, of the nation? That's right. He was, he was never afraid to take an unpopular position. When the ANC uh, under Jacob Zuma went through, well, its Trump years, uh, it would have been easy for him to sit aside and not tarnish uh, his wonderful reputation, but he took them on head on. And he said, you know, we took on the apartheid regime, we'll take you on as well, unless, you know, if you can't provide the development challenge. And um, South Africa became one of the first countries to recognize gay rights, to allow gay marriage. But the Anglicans of South Africa were strongly opposed. And when the Anglican Church in England recognized gay marriage, uh, many Anglicans in South Africa wanted to break with that church. He didn't care. He didn't care that his own parishioners were divided on this issue. He was always willing to stand for people who were oppressed and take unpopular positions and uh, to, to, his, to his last day. And just uh, as a last question, what's his legacy when it comes to the African continent or even the developing world as a whole? Well, I think that uh, the Truth and Reconciliation Commissions are a model in Africa, because once you've brought the violence to an end, there's a lot of vengeance that people want for the suffering they've been through. And uh, many countries have tried after violent civil wars or attempted genocide to have truth and reconciliation commissions. Uh, they haven't succeeded to the extent that he succeeded, but in part, I think that's what he'll be remembered for the most, was this remarkable ability to get the perpetrators of the violence of apartheid and the victims to come together. And there are many tearful moments. There are some wonderful documentaries that could be shown in commemoration at schools to remember who this man was.